The Wild Game Feast is an incredible meal put on by North Idaho College and the Alumni Association to benefit scholarships to help students go to school. The Game Feast is a six course meal and one of those courses includes the appetizers. Appetizers, we have five different foods that we highlight, all being wild game, one of those being bison brisket. We'll cook that today for you. Also, the dessert is a huckleberry bread pudding with a wild turkey, not a wild turkey, but a wild turkey hard sauce. Um, it's incredible, has caramel glazed over the top. Everyone at the Game Feast just loved it, so that's what we'll be cooking for you today. Behind the scenes of an event, of a food event, takes more than just cooking the food. There's a thousand things that go into it. We start planning for the Game Feast six months in advance to get the menus together to ensure the right items are available at the time of year that we need them. So, let me send you to the Game Feast. First course tonight is going to be a, a soup that you saw obviously on your menu that we've created out of winter squash. The winter squash is acorn squash we chose. It'll, the soup will be served in the acorn squash which hopefully will be a good presentation. It's really rich, extremely rich. Uh, maybe only eat half of it to save room for the rest of the meal. Second course is going to be a spinach salad that has the venison in it. Obviously venison is something that most of us have tasted before. We tried to add a little twist to it and put it cold on a salad, so hopefully it'll be something that you haven't tasted before. The main course is going to be caribou, which I think is something most people haven't had the opportunity to taste. The caribou is going to be, um, well actually is prepared right now in the ovens cooking. And the dessert, word of caution, there is alcohol in the, the, in the dessert that wasn't cooked off. So if you choose not to have that, it's a sabian sauce that has the wild turkey in it. If you choose not to have that, just ask your server. We also have one made with Bavarian cream, so you can still have the huckleberry bread pudding um, and, and, and not have the It doesn't have a lot of alcohol, but you can taste it. And if that bothers you, please reframe and just ask your server for something different. Um, but if you do like it, have it, because it's incredible. Um, <laughs> it's the one thing that we did that rocks. It's everybody in the kitchen sampled it. Everybody in the audience sampled it. Everybody, the security came by and sampled it. Um, it's incredible. Welcome back from the Game Feast. Incredible, wasn't it? Of course it was. Um, well, now, since you saw the bison brisket, you saw people actually eating that, what we're going to do is prepare it here for you, show you the steps, the essential items that need to go into it. Bison brisket, or any kind of brisket, or any kind of dry rub that you do, is open to interpretation. I like my rub extremely spicy, so you'll see some spicy herbs here. You might see a little more crushed red pepper than generally you would like to use. But please, um, give it a shot, because it's incredible. Spicy is not bad. The key is, all ingredients need to be dry, hence the word dry rub. Always remember, whatever you have in your storage or your pantry can be used in a dry rub. It's open to interpretation. I like mine spicy, as I said, so black pepper, garlic, oregano, onion powder, sweet basil, and I put in equal parts of each herb or spice, and 
I use two tablespoons of each one. If you like something more, put more of that in. The only caution I use is don't add too much salt. The salt will bring the juice to the outside of the meat. Salt is needed for the seasoning, but you don't want the juice to come outside. You're trying to retain all that juice inside of the meat to keep it um, tender. So, again, two, two tablespoons of crushed red pepper because I like it spicy. Kosher salt, all salt is different. Kosher salt, sea salt, try not to use table salt or iodized salt because those salts tend to taste a little medicine-y. Then you just mix these together um, with your hands. It's, you have to cook with your hands. That's what they're there for. And they're very, very aromatic. So you sneeze a little bit, but that's a good thing. So we have the spices mixed together. Now we need to prepare the meat for the spices. You could use any kind of oil that you choose. Olive oil is great, but if you use olive oil, try to stay away from extra virgin. Uh, you want to only use what you would generally cook with. Extra virgin olive oil has a pretty stout flavor. I'm using canola oil, 80% canola oil, 20% um, olive oil. And it still gives me a little bit of the olive taste, but the canola oil is extremely healthy. This process is relatively simple, and again, you have to use your hands. Just treat it like you would anything else. Give it a good rub with the olive oil. It's going to hold all the spices together. And then you want to coat the meat with just enough spices that you can't quite see the meat. Just kind of make, lay it on, because this is going to give it all the seasoning, all the flavor that you want. And it's going to taste incredible because that's what dry rubs do. Taste incredible. The key is, is to ensure that the dry rub coats in all of the meat because that's what offers the flavor. And if it, you went to all the trouble to make the spice, you might as well use it on all the meat. Now it's the time it goes into the refrigerator. You're going to let it marinate in the refrigerator in the spices for two hours. Okay, we've been marinating now for uh, two hours in the refrigerator, and it's time to put it on the grill. The time limit in the refrigerator isn't overly essential, two hours, four hours, six hours. The only problem is if you over marinate, the dry rub turns into a wet rub because of the blood releases back out of the meat. So the key is keep it close. Uh, you have plenty of time, and there's no real rush to put the dry rub on early. It's even best to, if, if you think you're not going to repair the meat within the next four or five hours, put the dry rub on right before you cook it. You're still going to get the heat transference from the rub into the meat. That's going to allow it to still give you the flavor. Not quite as intense, but you still get the flavor. Our key with the brisket is we like to serve it rare to medium rare. Medium rare is about 135 135 degrees on the inside. It's essential to have an instant read thermometer, stick it into the meat, then you know. Another way to tell the doneness of the meat is to press on it. When the meat is raw, it's going to be kind of like this part of your hand. You press on that part of your hand, you can feel that it, there's no resilience there. So press on the meat. If it feels that way, you know that it's just starting to cook. As it gets harder to the touch, it's getting more done. So pay close attention to that and you'll People will be impressed when you barbecue in form on the weekends. Now you're going to notice when this is flipped, it's not going to look pretty. It's going to look burnt because the um, dried herbs burn on the meat. You have two choices. One school of thought is once you've let this rest in the refrigerator for two hours, just rinse all the herbs off. And then you still have some of the flavor in the meat, but you don't have the problem with burning. I like to leave it on because I really like forming that crust and the crust really makes the meat taste incredible. So I leave it on. Another issue is turning the meat. A lot of people love to turn meat a lot. It's like the barbecue guy, you know, out in the backyard and you're gonna get in there and turn it again. Here comes your buddies, you're gonna give it another flip, make sure the meat's perfect. It doesn't really help the meat. Um, we have a saying in food and that is let the food cook. So you just let it cook until you think it's about time to flip it. Do it once and do it right. So now it's been cooking about four minutes. We're going to give it that 90 degree turn. So simply just pick it up. You can see the burnt on the back and to 90 degrees. If you're cooking a steak without the dry rub, that's going to give you those really cool crisscross patterns that you see in steak houses and then again, impress your friends. Now it's time for the third flip. This part's the easy part. You get to see your results on the back side. Uh, 
bison is a, a meat, as I said, that's extremely healthy. But if you can't find bison, bison can be tough, and of course it's more pricey than beef. Beef brisket is a great example. Use beef brisket if you can. Skirt steak or flank steak works great. Flank steak will be a lot thinner, so it'll cook faster and give you the same results, but um, a lot less cooking time, which is not a bad thing. Bison can be found all over the United States, and we'll list on our website some of the resources for that. Also, we'll list our recipes, so please, at the end of the program, look for our website. Now, the Wild Game Feast obviously is a struggle to put together, as you saw in the footage before. Everything comes out at exactly the right time. As soon as you're done with your salad, the main course comes out. As soon as you're done with the soup, you get your salad. How do we make that happen? Well, everything is planned well, well in advance. The soup that you saw in the acorn squash shell that was poured into the shell in the morning, simply put into the oven, all 200 of the squash came out of the oven at the same time, which made them all available at the same time. Then the preparers, the chefs, put them all together on the plate with the kale, as you saw, a little squirt of whole cream, and then nutmeg on the top to finish it off. Servers picked it up and took it out. All 200 people served in three or four minutes. So that is the trick. Prepare as much as you can ahead of time and plate as much as you can ahead of time.